in the book of judges we read about a judge by name jafta in chapters 11 and 12 he was a rejected person but how he became an exalted one let's see the lessons jafta is teaching us in the bible salvation history is viewed as a cycle of events israel once faithful is tempted and begins to worship alien gods lord gets angry with them and punishes them delivering them over to the enemies then they cry out to the lord for help and god sends them leaders and judges who become instruments of god's justice and righteousness judges were charismatic people chosen by god during the time when israelites had no kings judges served as military leaders to fight the enemies of the israelites they were of course temporary leaders who ruled israel on god's behalf there were 12 judges in all and the eighth was jephtha the most difficult story to understand in the bible is the story of jephtha what the word of god teaches through this man should serve as an encouragement to all of us Who is Jephtha? As we read in the book of Judges chapter 11 verse 1 It speaks about Jephtha He is a valiant warrior He was born to a prostitute His father was Gilead Gilead's wife also bore him sons and when these sons grew up they drew out jephtha saying you shall not share or inherit anything in the household of our father for you are the son of another woman rejected and chased out by his family jephtha became an orphan and escaped to the region of tob he joined there with the youth who spent their life as raiders and vagabonds we read in the same chapter verses 4 to 6 israel now needed a leader to fight their enemies the ammonites who had declared war on them elders of gilead went to the land of tob to meet and ask jephtha to lead their army the very people who joined jephtha's family in driving him out of his father's house were now asking jephtha come and lead our men in fighting the ammonites judges chapter 11 verses 7 to 8 says jephtha asked the elders of gilead did you not drive me out of my father's house because you hated me why do you come to me now in your distress The elders answered him We want you to be head of the whole of Gilead Jephtha answered them If the Lord grants me victory I will be your head And they said to him May the Lord listen to us Woe to us if we do not carry out 
what we have just said jafta comes in here as a person with a bad family background but is not one's background or race or culture or language or caste that god sees we read in the book of isaiah chapter 60 verse 22 the least among you will become a clan the weakest one a mighty nation i am the lord i will do this swiftly in its due time judges 11 11 says jephtha returned with the elders of gilead they made him their head and general he repeated all his conditions in the sight of the lord in mispa as we read in the first letter of st peter chapter 5 verse 7 cast out all your cares upon him for he cares for you jephtha handed over everything all his concerns and worries to the lord trusting that yahweh the god of israel would take care of his concerns the same people who joined his brothers and chased and drove him out were now wanting to make jephtha their leader and judge he is an exalted person now he relied on god lord you be our judge and you lead us psalm 145 was 18 says the lord is close to those who call him he hears their cry and rescues them jephtha called on the lord in truth and god was close to him israelites complained against moses and even against yahweh you promised us a fertile land you freed us from slavery now why have you abandoned us why is there so much suffering for us help us lord as a righteous judge as jesus said much later in the gospel of mark chapter 9 verse 22 all things are possible to one who believes book of judges 11 12 we read Jephtha sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites to convey what has happened between us that you come and attack us in our own country God gave this land to us Israel has not seized your land when Israel left Egypt The Israelites sent messengers to Sihon the king of the Ammonites and said to him let's pass through your country and go to our place but Sihon did not trust Israel enough to let them pass through and attack them The Lord helped Israel to defeat the Ammonites and conquer all their land. Since the Lord, the God of Israel, has taken this land from the Ammonites for his people Israel, can you now take it away from us? For 300 years we have lived here. 
why did you not recover this within that time jafta said i have not offended you but you are treating me badly by attacking me let the lord be our judge and decide today between the people of israel and the people of amman the king of the ammonites did not pay attention as we read in 11:28 the king of the ammonites did not pay attention to jephthah's message and the next verse we read 11:29 the spirit of the lord came upon jephthah he recognized the strength of the ammonites army he made a vow to god when i return triumphantly from the ammonites whoever comes first out of my house to meet me shall be offered as a burnt offering by me read in 1131 when i return triumphantly from the ammonites whoever comes first out of my house to meet me shall be offered as a burnt offering by me the next was 32 we read the lord gave him the lord gave jephtha victory jephtha's daughter his only child danced with the joy on hearing about his father's victory and ran out to be the first to meet him as he was coming back home from the battlefield his daughter came first to meet him she was not aware of the vow his father had made to offer to god the first person who came to meet him when jephtha saw his own daughter we read in verse 35 when he saw his own daughter he tore his clothes and cried out my daughter you have shattered me you have brought me misfortune for i have made a vow to the lord and now i cannot take it back she requested him to send her away to the mountains there i shall lament because i must die a virgin when two months expired his daughter returned to her father and he did to her just as he had vowed as we read in 1139 as difficult and heartbreaking it was to jephtha still he chose to keep his vow to god god never wants human sacrifice we read in genesis 22:12 god never wants human sacrifice the angel held the hand of abraham when he was about to kill his son do not extend your hand over the boy and do not do anything to him first jephtha should have certainly known that god prohibits child sacrifice from the books of moses we read in deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 31 you shall not act in like manner toward your god for they have done to their gods all the abominations that the lord spurns offering their sons and daughters and burning them with the fire 
you shall not like this man up toward your god then how could a man now perform a manner of worship that god himself called abomination and unacceptable second child sacrifice is a great abomination to god surely this type of sin would have prevented a person's name from being recorded in the annals of salvation history but on the other hand we see the name of jephtha mentioned in the book of hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 letter to hebrews chapter 11 32 his name is mentioned along with the names of gideon barak samson david samuel and the prophets for showing great faith third we read in judges chapter 11 verse 29 that the spirit of the lord rested upon jephtha so how could a man led by the holy spirit make a vow that leads him to burn his daughter alive as we recollect these three reasons it doesn't seem correct to assume that jephtha sacrificed his daughter quoting the original hebrew version might be of some help here the one who comes forth to meet me i will consecrate that person to the lord or if no one comes out i will offer god a burnt offering this should be the correct version the one who comes forth to meet me i will consecrate to the lord or if no one comes out i will offer yahweh a burnt offering it is apparent that jephtha is making a conditional vow here consecrate to the lord the first human coming out of his house if no human comes out then would make a burnt offering jephtha really did not offer his daughter as a burnt offering as we read in 1131 i will consecrate that person to god so jephtha did not sacrifice his daughter we read in the book of judges chapter 12 verse 1 now the men of ephraim started challenging jephtha why did you go and attack the ammonites without asking us to march with you jephtha answered we had a great struggle with the ammonites when i saw that no one had come to help me i risked my own life and marched against ammonites and defeated them the lord gave them into my hands 12 verses 2 to 4 we read victory is neither yours nor mine it is the lord's the lord gave them into my hands victory is neither yours nor mine it is the lord's the final victory belongs to god then jephtha 
gathered all the men of Gilead and defeated the Ephraimites. Like Jephthah, we should be willing to risk our life in our ministries. We should ask ourselves the question, Am I concerned only about my needs? Or am I able to look to the needs of others? Are my hands open or are they closed? Am I waiting for others to join me or to accept my views or are, am I faithful to God? Faithfulness is never risk free. Faithfulness to God is never risk free. Our Holy Father Pope Francis is asking us, Dearly beloved, take a risk. If you do not take risks, you will end up like the third person in the parable told us by Jesus about the rich man and his three servants who buried his talents abilities rather than multiplying them. There is no faithfulness without risk. Fidelity to God means handing over our life, letting our carefully laid plans be disrupted by our need to serve. Let our plans be upset, but let us go and serve. Let us not be mediocre and moderate followers of Jesus, who never go beyond boundaries because they are afraid of risk. And Holy Father is concluding his beautiful advice to us like this, don't begin a process of mummification of souls and don't end up as mummies. Dearly beloved, be ready to risk your life if you want to be faithful to God. There is no faithfulness without risk. The spiritual lessons the life of Jephthah is teaching us, we shall reflect in the next phase. Thank you and God bless you.